Wouldn't that be wild if we had some optical instrument that allowed us to see into our past? Focus in on 1861 and watch the American Civil War unfold. Focus on 2200 BC to see the building of the great Egyptian pyramids. Heck, focus on 65 million years ago to watch the extinction of the dinosaurs as it actually happened. Well, astronomers have such an optical instrument. They call it the telescope. In looking at a distant star, we are seeing that star as it was a long time ago. The star Betelgeuse is about 640 light years distant. This means that when we look at Betelgeuse, we're seeing light that left the star about 640 years ago. Looking for a time machine? Reach for a telescope. With telescopes, we're able to map out the history of our observable universe. Start cataloging the past as we literally see it today, and soon this leads us to an appreciable understanding of how the universe itself formed. The study of the overall structure and evolution of the universe is called cosmology. With our modern technology, especially with our space telescopes, the field of cosmology is currently in a golden era of discovery. Let's explore some of these exciting discoveries. As discussed in an earlier lesson, the astronomer Edwin Hubble found that our universe consists of many islands of stars. Each island we call a galaxy. This was a milestone discovery in and of itself. But Hubble took it a step further. He noted that all the galaxies are moving away from each other. A good analogy is an inflating balloon with ants spread evenly across the surface. Inflate the balloon and you'll see that all the ants get farther away from each other. What's it look like from the point of view of one of those ants? Well, each ant will see all the other ants receding away. Does that mean each ant is at the center of the expansion? It may look that way to the ant, but you know the balloon's surface has no center, just as it has no edges. Likewise, in an expanding universe, each galaxy will see all the other galaxies receding away. This doesn't mean that a particular galaxy is at the center of this expansion, no. Instead, we come to understand the idea that the whole universe itself is expanding. A consequence of this is that galaxies uniformly recede away from each other. Now, as a caveat, rather than saying galaxies here, I should be saying superclusters. Why? Because galaxies within a supercluster are close enough that gravity may cause them to accelerate toward each other, resulting in a collision. This is currently the case between our Milky Way and the Andromeda, which will collide in about 4 billion years. Outside of a cluster of galaxies, however, Hubble's observation holds firm. What we observe with our telescopes is that distant galaxies in every direction are receding away from us. Hubble also found that the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be receding. Again, by analogy, consider three galaxies on some stretchy fabric. Let's take the point of view of galaxy A. Initially, galaxy B is five units away, and galaxy C is, say, ten units away. The universe expands, and galaxy B is now about eleven units away, and galaxy C is twenty-two units away. How far has galaxy B just traveled? Well, that would be 11 minus 5 equals 6 units. How far has C traveled? That would be 22 minus 10 equals 12 units. Let's say all this happened in one second. So you see, from A's point of view, galaxy B is traveling away at 6 units per second, while galaxy C is traveling away at 12 units per second. In an evenly expanding universe, galaxy C, being twice as far, necessarily travels twice as fast from the point of view of galaxy A. Galaxy C sees much the same thing. 
they'll see galaxy B receding away at 6 units per second, and galaxy A at 12 units per second, twice as fast, because it's twice as far. What does galaxy B witness? Aha, uh -huh. both galaxies A and C are the same distance, so they appear to be receding at the same pace. The important point here is that from no matter where you are, you'll see a direct relationship between the distance of a galaxy and the rate at which it's receding away from you. The farther it is, the faster it appears to be moving away. How can we tell how fast a galaxy is moving away? Actually, it's quite simple. As we discussed earlier, each element emits its own characteristic spectral fingerprint. We can see these fingerprints in the light coming from distant galaxies. What we find is that the spectral pattern for each galaxy shifts to some lower frequency. This is the result of the Doppler effect. Just as the siren of a receding fire truck has a lower frequency, lower pitch, as it moves away from you, light also shifts to a lower frequency as the light source moves away from you. The faster the source moves away, the more the shift to lower frequencies. Because lower frequency visible light is red, we call this a red shift. So we say the greater the red shift, the greater the velocity of the receding galaxy. Hubble found a direct relationship between a galaxy's distance and its redshift. Here's one of his original graphs. Note, the greater the distance, the greater the redshift. With modern space telescopes, we've been able to extend this graph much farther, and we find this direct relationship holds true. Except for a remarkable discovery made in the late 1990s, in which we found that distant galaxies are actually accelerating away from each other, as though driven by some unseen force. We'll talk more about that when we get to the idea of dark energy. For now, an important point needs to be highlighted. Galaxies recede away from each other for a unique reason, which is that the very space separating them is itself expanding. In other words, the amount of space real estate is somehow increasing. As space expands, the light passing through is stretched to longer wavelengths, which means lower frequencies. So the redshift of a distant galaxy results because of the expansion of space. And it's the expansion of space that makes it look like galaxies, superclusters actually, are all receding away from one another like ants on an inflating balloon. The stretching of light due to the expansion of space we call the cosmological redshift. This idea of the expansion of space itself is a tough concept to grasp, so let me walk you through it step by step in the next lesson. Good science to you. Mm -hmm.